welcome to next lecture lecture 38 which is on flying drones for data collection so this is very important when we have uh, selected the drone uh, how to fly and how to collect the data this is what we are going to learn in this lecture so if we look at uh, the uh, the entire system what we call as the unmanned aerial system the short form is the uas so this unmanned aerial system it has a UAV, our aircraft system on one hand, but also at the other hand, you know, it is has control systems, which is on the ground and has a transmitter and a computer attached to it. Then we have a data link system, communication system, and we have uh, certain accessories. So this entire thing will make the UAS. So we require actually a good, efficient UAS system so that we can fly this, collect the data and carry out the meaningful analysis from the data. So aircraft, ground control station, then the data link system, communication systems. So if you look at the coordination, so this is very important, the coordination between all these uh, parameters, link is required. So you have a UAV platform in the first box and the ground control station at the other box system. So on flight, on board flight controller systems which will have the data storage, flight controller processing, mission oriented processing and this all will require the battery support. Then we have the sensor systems. So that all will have uh, uh, some kind of a communication with the ground control station. At ground control station, we have some kind of a power source. They have the communication modules and we have also some processing, some software systems which can work on it. So this is the coordination between the two and there is a two-way coordination. As you can see, both are linked with the wireless connectivity. When the drone is flying up in the sky, then you require some kind of a wireless connectivity. So radio waves, you know, they are mostly connected together. There are certain things when we are flying the drone and we are trying to collect the data. So there are certain things which we should know. So here it shows that what you should do and what you should not do. Do's and don'ts are very, very important. And this is indicating that uh, what you are not supposed to do. For example, don't fly close to the airport. Don't fly near to the military establishment. Don't fly into somebody's uh, private courtyard. So these are uh, some of the don'ts which you have to don't fly beyond a certain uh, visibility or beyond a certain height. And what you should are supposed to do, uh, uh, a, a trained pilot should fly it because if any damage takes place, if you are damaging somebody's property, if you are hurting somebody, uh, then this is the responsibility of the person who is flying. So it is important that a person who is flying the drone is a, is a trained operator, uh, certified operator actually to collect the data because any loss if it occurs is the responsibility of the person who is flying the drone. So this uh, earlier also you have seen uh, this slide, but this is again important in the sense that the aerodynamics you have to understand uh, because your uh, lift should be higher than the weight of the entire thing. Only then the uh, uh, aircraft will move up into the sky and also you have to make a balance between the thrust which is generated by those uh, rotors and the drag force which are acting on the body of the drone systems. So this aerodynamics is important so that it, the, it flies with a designated speed through which you want. There are rotational motion, three rotational motion, roll, pitch and yaw of the aircraft itself, of the drone system itself. So these are also to be controlled. So roll is the rotation along the y axis. So if uh, we consider the this is the direction this is the roll and pitch is in the perpendicular direction to that 
along the x axis and ya could be you know rotation about the z axis. So, x, y and z rotations of the uh, aircraft body or the drawn body one has to understand it should be stable while the data is collected otherwise the data will be collected to a slightly different area or the data would be distorted data. So, when you are operating the drone uh, there is a uh, observer on the ground there is a pilot in command on the ground. So, these are the ground or persons on the ground who are controlling basically uh, the movement of the drone system. So, this is the drone system. So, they are communicating with the help of a link. Okay. So, there is a communication link through which safety link or RC communication link through which the communication is going on and there is a control and communication link uh, between the drone and the ground receiving station or ground control station. So, there is a, uh, a ground control station where the data is being transmitted to that and there is a small processor, uh, the small processor device which can process the data. So, these are the different uh, parts you know which are communicating with each other and ultimately then you are getting the process data from the ground control station. Now, when you are flying the drone very very important part is the flight planning part. Flight planning is important as uh, when you are collecting the aerial photographs you do the uh, flight planning while collecting the aerial photograph. In the same way the flight planning is done with the help of the drone system and this flight planning involves several parameters uh, more or less similar to what you learned in the aerial photogrammetry. So, you should know what is your the extent of the area and you can actually have either the topo sheet of that area, you can mark that area on the Google earth images and when you are marking that particular extent of the area you know the orientation and you can define along that you know how to cover that. For example, in this uh, diagram it is shown you know all those yellow lines are showing the path of the UAV system which is following the zigzag path or the parallel path which is following in order to collect the data. So, one has to determine uh, flying from the base station uh, first of all to the project site and then is orienting this uh, drone in a particular direction and start collecting the data in a zigzag way and complete the task and then return to that ground station. So, this is the uh, complete flight planning when you are doing the flight planning you have to also ensure the uh, kind of the height at which the drone is to be flown, what will be the scale of the photographs if it is a photo based drone then what will be the overlap between the images because uh, 3D model has to be created or they are to be studied in the 3D environment. So, there are several plannings which are required to be carried out what will be the speed of the drone. So, this is all under the flight planning. Now, uh, you may have completely uh, manual control drone or maybe have semi automated or the automated. So, the flight planning uh, uh, will slightly differ you need additionally you need to feed the coordinate systems additionally if it is in the autonomous mode. In addition when you are flying the drone in addition you have to take care of the regulations the flying regulations the rules and regulations which are uh, uh, varying from country to country. So, there is a airspace classification in general. Uh, there are no flying zones. So, for example, it is shown in the uh, red also that is this is the no flying zone although maybe you know this is a military establishment or it is a very uh, you know defense kind of a um, area. Then you have the, uh, a, a, the limit through which you can actually take the fly to the area and take the observations. So, normally this is 120 meter height to which you can fly and collect the data. Then there is a uh, integrated space is there where the normal flights are also moving and if you want to fly your drone into that then probably you have to uh, uh, inform this uh, at the flying station. 
so if we look at the uh, rules and regulations of the area which is restricted and area which is permitted in us so this is the example of the us the area has been divided into class a to class d so this is class a and uh, then you have uh, area near the airport which is class b c d and e so there are different regulations actually one must get the permission from the air traffic controller if you are flying uh, in this region class b c d e when you are flying near the airports area then there are other restricted areas are also there military based establishments are there or if there is any stadium or there is a nuclear power plants so these are all defined uh, in each country that which are those areas then there are other regulations about the height to what height you can fly uh, this drone in order to collect the data so there are different height regulations which are shown uh, for us in this slide but in india also uh, these regulation exist now so one once we are talking of these regulation it is important to understand what is the size of the drone which we can fly permitted whether our operator is uh, trained has some kind of a certification also so these uh, things are actually written over here that remote pilot certification is required the drone has to be officially registered and there is some number which is given to the uh, operator then visual line of sight so you can fly it as long as it is visible to you daylight only ground speed is maximum 100 miles per hour the altitude as i told you 400 feet or 120 meter the minimum weather visibility 3 miles you cannot operate directly over the people so these are actually the regulations which us is imposing similarly each country including india they have framed their own regulations uh, in order to fly the drone so uh, pilot certification is required so this is what it says so there are certain uh, centers training centers which provide the training and the pilots are trained uh, flying to the uh, area and collecting the data so that certification in certain country is a must so this is showing a gis based map here and this map is indicating the areas which are restricted areas so those circles which you see here it is shown for the maryland state in usa that which are the restricted areas which are shown by the different circle diameter that one cannot fly and collect the data within these zones so that kind of a, a gis based analysis uh, one can also actually carry out now as i told you that uh, you know legally uh, if your drone damages somebody's property or infrastructure or human being that is your responsibility so you are totally responsible for each and every flight which you are undertaking because this is under the criminal prosecution uh, there is no excuse that uh, i am beginner uh, i don't know how to fly the drone so this is important that we understand the critical part of it now we have to understand the rules and limitations everything so 120 meter actually is the height through which you can actually fly and keep the distance from the people and their property so people and the property approximately 50 meter distance in the crowded area where there is a big crowd there is some function going on and there is a built up area 150 meter is the limit don't overfly over the people so this is the kind of restrictions which have been imposed now the operation part of it we'll discuss so when we are operating it there are certain terminology we have to understand the terminology and then according to this terminology we have to work on it so first one is the pilot in command so the person ultimately who is responsible for the safety and operation of the aircraft during the flight is called the pilot in command so the pilot in command is basically the person standing on the ground and controlling the movement of the entire uav system then we have a ground control station 
and the short form is a GCS and it provide the facilities and uh, computers for human control of the UAV system. So, entire thing uh, you can see here will be controlled from this ground controlling station the moment of the uh, landing, taking off, moment of the aircraft and the operation of the various sensors which are mounted on. Then there is a term visual observer VO. It is the secondary person to watch the sky for intruding aircrafts and watch the unmanned aircraft. So, that is called the visual observer can visualize actually the aircraft. Then control and communication is very very important. So, flight controllers we are using for controlling and communication between the flight control and the ground station. So, typically it is done by the radio waves. So, these control and communication systems are important then link and RC communication. As I showed you in the previous diagram also the safety link typically they are the uh, RC transmitter link but could also be different such as uh, could be radio signal or digital Wi-Fi uh, etc etc. So, these are also important. Then the other terms are whether it is a manual or it is a autonomous type. It is uh, acting independently or you require the human control for each and every activity. This is important. So, autonomous are little expensive, they are little complicated also and uh, um, they are presently under the testing stage as well. Then altitude hold function because you have to maintain a certain height when you are covering uh, the project area so that the scale of the image is uniform. So, you have to when you are consistent about the altitude then roll, pitch and yaw right. They are also to be controlled at the time of the altitude control. Return to home is another important function that uh, when you are flying from a particular point drone to the project site and is collecting the data then it comes back to the same point where it was flown. So, this facility is important so that the drone is not lost in the um, environment in the atmosphere. So, you have to bring it back to the home. Many of the drones the facility is there when it is starts suppose malfunctioning or the battery condition is poor. Then what it will do is it will come back to the starting point. Uh, instead of actually collapsing there itself, it will come back to the point. So, this return to home facility is very, very good. Waypoint navigation uh, is uh, uh, useful when we want drone system to compulsorily take the data of those points. So, sometimes uh, our some of the uh, features are obligatory in the nature that means we definitely want the images or the coordinates of those points, we do not want to miss those points, then the waypoint navigation is important so that the with the help of the GPS coordinate system which will compulsorily go through this area. This waypoint navigation is also important when we are using the autonomous drone so that uh, using the coordinate systems it will actually follow the defined path. Then manual control. So, manual control is uh, you know simple with the help of the controller you are controlling the flight taking off landing of that. Then next is the payload system. So, in the payload we have uh, sensors devices, we have the scanner, we have the camera systems. So, they are all mounted uh, on the system and we have to see the total load whether the uh, UAV system is able to carry that total load up into the sky. Then geofencing is a very very important application and particularly it has become more important once the um, drones they have been observed at different airports. You know the, uh, the drones which uh, were observed at the airport and disturbed the flight schedule of many flights. Uh, so, this geofencing concept came. And uh, the idea of this geofencing is that if we can define those areas where the drone cannot fly, even accidentally it cannot go to those 
areas. So the, the coordinates of those areas are again defined with the help of the GPS and the drones are not expected to visit those areas, to fly to those areas. So that is called geofencing, very useful application. Then fly away protection is the next part. So this is the term which is used for auto landing part. So you want auto landing at a particular point that is the fly away protections. Then intelligent orientation control. The forward direction of the UAV is same as the recorded nose direction. So this is the intelligent orientation control. Then sense and avoid is also very important. Uh, many of the UAVs, you know, they collide with the bulbs or the uh, other UAVs or the other small aircrafts or balloons. So the sense and avoid algorithm will or sensor will actually sense that there is some object on the way and then the uh, smart drones will take the decision to take a detour of the uh, path or you can control it manually. You can take a detour if you can observe that thing. So sense and avoid system is important so that the drone does not collapse with the other objects while collecting the data. Visual tracking, so you are using some kind of a cameras to control the roll, pitch and yaw to track the moving object. Fail safe system is preventing the crash of the uh, system in case of the unsafe situation. So unsafe situation could be loss of signals or it could be a low battery, poor weather conditions. Uh, so th in that case, it will uh, actually not crash, but it will land very, very safely at the place. Then arming is another component. Arming aircraft is used to fly and motors will spin when the throttle is applied. So this is used as a armed aircraft is um, used as a safety mechanism. Then there are ultrasonic sensors. So there are equipment used for range measurements. So if you want to actually do the range measurements and you want to know the distance from a particular object. So this is very, very useful. Ultrasonic sensors are also very useful for uh, collision avoidance algorithm. Then there are, uh, you know, EGL above ground level. This is a term which indicates that uh, how high the aircraft is flying above the ground. The optical flow is used for improving the stability when using a camera to detect the direction of the motion of the object. Then first person view is also very important because with the help of that first person view, there is an additional camera which is fitted in the UAV and the person can see what the UAV is looking at that particular instant of time. So it is not just like a black box, the UAV will collect the data and then you like to display the data and see what it has collected. But uh, a real time scenario is created where you can see what the what data is UAV is collecting. Then there is a term called line of sight, LOS. This line of sight is a very important term because you know there is a term called beyond line of sight which is BLOS. There is a term called LOS. So beyond line of sight the operator and UAV are too distant and obstructed and one cannot see them. So uh, beyond line of sight it is not permitted when you have the manually operated kind of a drone systems to operate. So always operate within the line of sight. Then there are no flying zones, NFZ and notice to the airman. So and not, not M, similarly they are followed in US. Then there is a air traffic control. So air traffic control is, you know, when you are moving the uh, drone near the airport in the vicinity of the airport, then there is a coordination which is required. Although you cannot fly, but if there are so many aircrafts flying in that area, then air traffic control has to be informed and there is a coordination which is required between them. So these are some of the terms which is important. Then total flight restriction is another terminology. Here the flight is a completely not permitted, shutdown is there, 
maybe uh, uh, some maintenance work is required maybe some there is activity may the, the president is arriving in the city uh, there is a very large stadium event so that terminology is used total flight restriction so flight is not permitted during that particular time now having understood these different concept of flying the drone still there are many many challenges and there are many many constraints there are examples when the people have flown the uh, drone in order to collect the data and drone uh, without collecting the data or uh, only collected the data for few minutes it is lost the control and it is lost in the atmosphere so you are not able to bring it back to the flying point there are examples where drone is flown and it has collided with the other trees or other high rise buildings and it has collapsed so these are some of the things which are not required because this is a costly device when you are um, having a high resolution camera this is also very expensive the laser scanners are very expensive so what you require is actually you have to see what are the challenges what are the constraints and how to overcome those so the challenges are flat and small view of the object difficult in the in the labeling of the object overlap and large image size so these are some of the challenges which are there when you are flying the drone from one point to another the other one which i mentioned in my previous lecture is the consumption of the power because it can carry the limited power up in the sky and uh, you want to collect the data for a longer period of time but there is a limitation of the battery so battery will drain very soon and uh, in order to collect the data for several hours together then probably you need several sets of batteries so there is lot of uh, methodology lot of research is going on being developed how to prolong the life of the battery so that when the drone is flying it can be charged during that flight so either the another drone is sent at that location with the fully charged battery which is shown over here in the diagram and there is a swap of the batteries so the other drone brings the drain battery back and gives this charge battery to the system and the uh, system is still moving so there is no halt of the system or other could be the there are charging station power charging station on the pole so the drone will sit there for a certain period of time on those charging poles and the battery will be charged again and then it will start working into this area so this is another uh, important uh, consideration when you are flying drones and collecting the images then under the challenges itself we have uh, regulatory concerns so each country has certain regulations certain laws which we have to see in india also you cannot fly a 5 km within the air vicinity of the aircraft the height of the drone should not be more than 120 ft so these are the regulations which one has to see so all drones for example 250 g to 25 kg must be registered so registration is important then uh, 122 m is approximately is the flight limit line of sight should be there at all times so you must be able to see your drone from all the times then there are airport zone restrictions and there are travel restrictions which i told you then there are technical challenges are there so technical challenges are there limited range for the multi rotor drones 20 to 25 minutes of flying time you can get at the max now fixed wing may require a runway so you may not get a, a ground which could be used as a runway because if you want to uh, use for a longer time fixed way can be used but there is a limitation with that also now pilot is needed a trained person is required for both the type of the drones when you are operating in addition to that there are limitations of the weather you may have rain heavy rain heavy winds heavy fog etc where you cannot fly the drone and can take the images there are external consideration external consideration could be you don't have a qualified pilot you have proximity to airport you have um, bad weather conditions uh, you have too much of administrative work for acquiring the permissions 
there is a problem to land vertically or take off vertically there is a problem with the radio communication devices or collision with the big birds or the eagle so these are some of the external considerations when we are flying drone to the area so what are the things which might go wrong when you are flying and collecting the data a uh, pilot error due to the error of the pilot things might go wrong weather could be too windy not supportive weather or there is a loss of communication between the uh, uh, the ground control station as well as the drone system uh, automated system error the drones fly away there is a loss of gps you don't have the coordinate real world coordinate or the loss of the altitude imu failure so these are some of the things which might go wrong because of these are all electronic things might go wrong while you are collecting the data so these are also to be considered thank you very much